Hi, welcome to the Ghost Men of a Radio Station. And tonight my guest is Dr. Bilindia, who's transformation life coaching. What is the answer? She says, to answer this question, probably best I share you a definitely defined moment, like resulting compelling story, which is going to tell me a bit more about. As it came from an endemic and hard-working Sri Lankan family culture, which is obviously a huge influence on our life. As at any age, she's an abs- absolute result to becoming a vocal professional based on foundations of healing, compassion, empowerment, and giving back to society in medicine became my chosen field because I was surrounded by those high achievers I didn't doubt my ability to make any dreams come true. So, uh, Belinda, or Dr. Belinda, whichever way you prefer to be called, um, I'm on your uh, website, which I'm using as a guide, obviously. And at the moment you've got the latest book out, haven't you? Yes, that's which, right. Which is available on um, Amazon. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Well, uh, first of all, I want to say um, thank you very much, Mark, for having me on your beautiful podcast. Uh, it's really an honor to be on, and I appreciate you sharing your platform with me uh, so that I can kind of spread the love with the doctor. Video uh, brand um, so that people understand what my message is. Uh, that's what I mean when I say brand. So, first of all, thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, the book. Um, so, how that was born was uh, so I'm, I'm a GP by background. I was on maternity leave with my first uh, cheeky little monkey. I've got, I've got two. And I was, um, we had a little bit of a tricky um, birth situation, which meant that we were both in intensive care for a couple of days. You know, we're all fine in the end. Um, but um, essentially, it meant that because we were querying meningitis at one point with my little one, he didn't he didn't have it in the end. But, you know, during those scary times, they then wanted us to stay at home. So we had our own lockdown uh, for three, four months. Um and I basically needed to, um, I was very aware, being a GP, that I was at risk of postnatal depression, um, you know, with everything that happened, So and being quite isolated as well. So um, I basically was very intentional um, with, you know, like, um, doing really researching how to not get postnatal depression, but obviously not wanting to take medication and, and just wanting to really research it so basically I, I discovered about affirmations and visualization healthy eating I mean this all sounds really obvious really obvious things but I wanted practical strategies you know I was a tired mom um, and I really wanted to ensure that I was doing things that were really going to work so I essentially wrote it all down you know like Everyone has a note section on their phone. You just kind of jot things down, not thinking much of it. And uh, a friend then asked me, like, oh, how like, how did you... I don't understand how you didn't go to any baby groups. You didn't have your family hardly come round. Um, like, nothing. Like, how did you keep saying? Um, so I shared her notes, my notes with her and a, a couple of friends. And they just sort of said, oh, actually, I'd, I'd you know, really like to have this. Can you just print it out for me? Or can you, like, put it into, like, a little brochure, like a little, you know, book, booklet sort of thing? And I thought, actually, I always wanted to write a book, uh, so maybe I'll just I'll just do it. And that uh, initially scary experience in intensive care made me really think, do you know what, I don't want to be one of those people who just always has dreams but not, doesn't really do anything with them. So I, I wrote the book in a week, <laughs> which is a bit crazy, and I formed my own publishing company and just published it because I didn't want to be hanging around, you know, trying to figure out how that whole world works so I just did it published it and that's how it came about <laughs> and do, uh, what do you think people would uh, when they read your book do you think how what sections would you hope they get out of it the most what what, what do you think they would get out of it so essentially uh, so the book's called Habits your 21 day guide to transforming your mind body and life so I'm also a life coach or transformation coach or board proctor coach so many different words for it and uh, this has got three sections yeah so the first one is about the mind different techniques that you can use which are evidence based to really 
bulletproof your mindset so that you can genuinely achieve whatever it is that you want. Now, I know that sounds really weird out there, but these are practical strategies. You know, I'm a GP. I don't want any kind of fads. So these are things that definitely work. Um, the second section is actually a cookbook. Um, so it's some plant-based um, foods there, but healthy foods, healthy meal plan there that you can either try. There's 21 meals, so you can either do one meal, new meal a day, or you can do a whole week of a huge transformation, uh, making a quantum leap in your life. Um, and then right at the end is a journal section. So this is looking at different character aspects. Uh, this is what Benjamin Franklin did. You know, he looked at 13 virtues within a person, 13 character traits, if you like. And he every day would really examine his character in a positive way, uh, but really examine it to see how can I compete with myself? How can I be better tomorrow? And so it's got those three sections. Um, and this is before I was a coach, and it really just got me thinking in that way. So what you would get out of it is um, a really good kickstart plan over either a week or 21 days to really transform your mind, body and your life. And I think it's probably obviously quite relevant, as you said earlier on, that you sort of went in your own lockdown, so you can relate to what people are going through at the moment. Obviously, you've had to now go back to uh, six people and washing hands and which we should have done in the first place but hey that we won't go into that debate but um do you think that by reading your book people will they can they can get a sense of things that they could do to do covert although it's not covert related but they can translate it into a covert world into into covert world yeah in current circumstances yes definitely I mean I think look lockdown people have lockdowns actually all the time for various reasons sometimes people are um, you know post uh, major surgery and they're out of action for sometimes 10-12 weeks and that can be a very difficult time sometimes it's postnatally you know after having a baby and although that's really common um, people often don't realize that uh, you know what it can be like that it can be quite isolating even if they don't have my situation where they're completely in lockdown but it's um, so I think I think that book can definitely be used by anyone in any to be honest in any situation it doesn't have to be you know in lockdown but I, the fact that I was using it in that time, especially when I was the only one in lockdown, as far as I know, um, these are proven strategies that work, you know. Um, so I would say go for it. I would say you have to also, one thing I wanted to say was, as I always tell my patients, you have to um, want it to work like anything you know, like even medication or therapy or even surgery, if there's a mind-body connection, you know, and it's real, using the subconscious mind, if you have decided that something is not going to work and you want to continue to tell yourself a negative story, I know this sounds a bit harsh, but it's true, um, then actually what will happen is your subconscious mind will start to look for all the reasons why it won't work and basically it will affect your results or it just won't be as much of a transformation and this works <clears throat> excuse me for treatments therapy surgery anything um it really does make a big difference so it does come with that caveat which should be used um in the school of life let's just say <laughs> well I, I like the fact you said about mind because i have mental health problems and i used to work in mental health and i know that mental health is a major issue now because as i said most people are going through a grieving period and when they when i speak to that people they say what do you mean i said well basically we've lost our so-called normal life and then we've had to readjust it to living in a different kind of world and i think we separate like the lord of the flies we've separated into two groups you know we've got the group that comply with the rules, want everything, they want to pay it, they want to be make sure everything goes right. And the other lot going, party time, we'll be all right. Nothing's going to affect us. But that's human society, I'm afraid, isn't it? It is. It is, it is. I mean, I think, I think um, to, yeah, I love that analogy, Lord of the Flies. That's, that's 
be- explains it beautifully. And I think it actually does show um, that, in my opinion, it's all about mindset, you know. Um, look, there's been big changes, and there will be more big changes. What I mean is um, not necessarily in relation to COVID, but just in the school of life. This is just what it's what it's about you know we had like the dinosaurs at one point and this is just evolution in in some ways um look from a spiritual point of view i don't have all the answers but these things do happen for a reason so it is all about mindset it doesn't mean you ignore obviously um rules have been put in place for some reason but don't feed the fears that's really important you know fear and faith are two emotions which you can't see Right? You can't see them, but people have full belief in them. And it's, again, almost like two camps, right? The fear, of, like, I'm not saying relating to what you had said, but you can also, with a mindset, have a very, you know, belief, bulletproof, confidence uh, mindset. You, yes, you, 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 you take what resonates with the rules and, and the interpretation that is um, safe, obviously, for everybody, and that works for you. Um and then, and then you have, you know, people who can be extremely fearful um, and questioning everything, even if it's not COVID. You know, it can be something else, some, something else that's going on. So it really just shows how you must develop a mindset, which is, and as, you know, you've been in your own journey, and I'm sure you found this as well, uh, Mark, is that it's about mindset, right? Because the external environment, there's only so much control you have over it. But your internal environment, which is your mindset, it's all yours. It is all yours if you choose it to be. Um, so I would say that, yeah, definitely there's two camps, uh, but you always have a choice. You always have a choice how you want it to be, but uh, you have to harness that inner power, you know, and that's what I touch on in the book as well. And again, with Lord of the Flies, right, that was about empowerment, right, or disempowerment of a certain group of people as well. And perception, you know, using our mental faculty of perception of the same situation, but perception and how things can just go into anarchy as well um, when there's not, when people don't follow the law of order which is a universal law um but you have to you have to do that in conjunction with another law which is called the law of rhythm right ebb and flow sometimes you have to go with the flow and this is why we need our this is what makes us mark different to animals you know human beings we have a mind all animals and mammals have a brain but what i'm talking about is the mind you know they don't as far as we know have mental faculties um, they don't have a self, an inner self image um, that can be telling them negative stories about themselves, you know. And often I do find, having been mental health director in, in NHS, um, many people with um, with mental health issues actually sometimes it can, you know, is it a mental health issue or is it sometimes the part of society? you know, that they've grown up in as well. I mean, it's in some cases, not all, of course, but in some cases, it can be questionable, you know. So um, I would say that mindset is the biggest thing with with with, with COVID, with my book, with, with everything in life. Mindset is the one thing you have absolute 100% control over and you should harness that inner power and go for it. And that's why I absolutely love coaching since I learned all about this uh, with my own experience I learned that uh, you really can you really can control what you want in your life if you choose to have it so obviously from a doctor you you like to intermix what they call homopathic medicine with conventional medicine and do you you, use yeah yeah. does your um cultural influences come in sometimes so I do, um, so not homeopathic, so I mean it's difficult isn't it because with alternative medicine there's so many different names, like it's holistic, homeopathic and complementary, it's hard to know what it is, but for me I like to call it holistic, uh, meaning that I, I'm not specialised in for example herbal medicine therapy or, um, or homeopathy, uh, but I do believe in it, I do think that it's really important, I think that actually what we call alternative medicine was actually the original way that we um, that we as healers or whatever you want to call it you know 
used to treat people, right? When you go back to uh, the days of the Hippocratic Oath when it was first made, that's actually how they were treating people. Conventional medicine, as we call it now, actually came afterwards. So I just call myself, well, what do you want to call it? A GP or a coach or a healer or doctor, whatever. Ultimately, I see it as taking people from here to where they want to go here, being the highest version of themselves, using whatever modalities that you know, incorporate. So yes, for example, Ayurvedic medicine, um, turmeric powder has like a me- has amazing uh, benefits and properties, and I think we're starting to to realise that now in the Western world. But again, none of these things are new. None of these things are new, even with mindset. None of this is new. This is all just an awareness. You know, we're just as a as a global society, we're now just raising our awareness um, as to actually we don't, you know, be so grateful that we have these amazing novel therapies and interventions and these fabulous things that we are, you know, be so grateful for that. But there's a lot that we can do ourselves, you know. I think that's the biggest thing. And I think sometimes because of, you know, various incidents and things that have happened in the past um somewhere along the way i think people either became disempowered or they handed their power over so that they really panic now when they don't get an appointment with their gp for three four weeks because they believe that if they don't get that appointment or if they don't have that repeat prescription I'm not saying don't take your medicines, but what I'm saying is, can you see what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what you mean, yeah. They've decided, you know, yeah, mm-hmm. like they've decided that, that um, if, you know, they've had their power over to the medication, as in fully, you know, I mean, you obviously take, you obviously use conventional medicine, but they've had it over completely to the point that they've, they feel so disempowered and that's where a lot of the fear comes from you know that's where then that turns into anger because people get scared they're scared that I don't have an appointment what's going to happen to me I, you know my prescription might come a day or two late you know what's going to happen but you know obviously there's a huge disclaimer here but ultimately you know that mind-body connection when that's really strengthened when you really really work on your mindset it's amazing what the the rest of your organs can do um it's the same thing as if you take a child and you put that child the subconscious mind is made in the first seven years yeah that's our mindset if you take one child and you put them in a very um abusive horrible environment tell the child constantly you know you're awful you're disgusting you're you know you're 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 bad you're a naughty boy and you just you say really degrading horrible things and awful treatment obviously their mindset is going to be in a, in a certain way very unhealthy very poor self-image which is what they really think of themselves and you can take that same child and put them in a very beautiful nourishing nurturing environment uh, with the things i talk about in the books the affirmations visualization self-belief you know harness your power you can do anything you can do anything if you don't know how to do it and you can find a way you know all of that and very empowering rising thriving mindset and I guarantee you their physical health will be completely different. Um, of course, there's genetics. So there are some things that we don't always have control over. But some genes are switched on in a particular, particularly stressful environment. Or it might be nothing to do at home. It might be work. Or it might be, yes, some world events. There are some things that we don't have full control over. But there is a lot that we do, you know. So what I'm trying to focus on is why don't we focus on the masses that we can do and then be grateful that actually there are some phenomenal amazing medications and therapies and treatments etc if you know after all of that that we still need those or during you know at the same time whichever you know so I think there's this whole you know people now are realizing wow there's actually a lot that that we can do so I'm not saying don't take your medication but just be open to Wow, actually, you know, like people are reversing their diabetes, for example, following certain diet plans and healthy eating and plant-based foods. Sometimes it's also the mind-body connection, allowing yourself to believe that this is also possible as well. Um, So, yeah, it's huge. It's so important. Self-image, your inner self-image in the subconscious mind, the really deep one. This is more than just, you know, like, yeah, let's just be positive. This is deep. You know, and um, so that's the one that we really need to work on and 
then our conversation that we're having with ourselves changes. Those voices change. Or we know when, okay, that's just a negative story and this one's my intuition. You know, it's like a, it's like a, it's a muscle. We need to exercise it and understand it. So, uh, sorry, I talk a lot about it because I'm like, as you can see, I'm just so, I'm so passionate about it's it. Okay. I don't mind it's okay. Good thing to have. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest thing is when the people say, go on a diet. Now, I'm going to explain this because I'm trying to go lose weight. And then people say, oh, it, yeah. And I say, yeah, but it's the hardest thing in the world to lose weight and it's the easiest thing to gain weight. Because some, some medications you are on do muck about with your weight as well as not all of them, but there are some. And also, as you say, it's down to genetics and then it's down to attitudes like sticking to it. It's like giving up smoking because you need food to eat. But you, that sometimes you eat your food because you're you're bored or you you're stressed, so you you're comfort eating. You're not eating eating. You're just eating yes. for the sake of it. Yes, exactly what you've just said. So mm-hmm. the the reason I'm jumping on that is um, exactly what you said, Mark. So when you're comfort eating, you know you're not hungry. Yeah, like you know it, isn't it? That's why you almost don't want to be comfort eating. But then you're like, oh well, I've started you know, eating the whole pizza now, so I might as well finish what I start at the time of ice cream. So it's almost like you are fully aware, and then you kind of don't feel great. And So it's a very emotional side of things. So that's the key. It's, it's, it's mindset, again. It's not about, and trust me, I've done all the diets. <laughs> uh, so it's not about which is the best diet. Yes, of course, there's research, and there's a lot of research now talking about plant-based um uh, plant-based medicine which is also something I practice but you know plant-based um, food plans I don't like the word diet because it talk, makes them temporary but you know food lifestyles or whatever so yes there is certain research but ultimately the reason why some people like as I've done in the past you know, there's loads of weight on Atkins or um, you know the 5-2 the, 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 the fasting diet whichever it is and they lose loads of weight, and then, you know, something happens, some kind of life event, or work gets crazy, or some deadline, or whatever it is, something happens after a few weeks or a few months, and then they basically put it all back on again, or, or like, half of it. Basically, it doesn't stick. It doesn't stick. Now, why is that? The reason why is because our mind is split into two, okay, roughly speaking. We have our conscious mind, which is sort of more like the intellectual, all the stuff that we know, all the facts that we know. And people think that it's all about all the diplomas and the letters and how much I know. But actually, it's all, it's, it, it, the subconscious mind determines 95% of all of our results. I'm talking about our income, our relationships, our health, the relationship with ourselves, the house we live in, everything. Because that is where our self-image lies. What do I mean by self-image? Self-image is what we really think of ourselves. And we have two self-images, Mark. We have our outer self-image, which is the one I'm projecting to you right now. Um, you know, I, I, you know, I don't sort of, um, you know, go, go to bed wearing this dress or my hair, you know, parted in this certain way or whatever. So obviously, uh, it's an image that we project to others. It's not that we're lying, but it's just, it's just, you know, how we want to be portrayed. We all do that. It's a human, it's human nature yeah but it's the inner self-image the one that we really think about ourselves that is the one so the person who went on the diet the inner self-image has never it never changed it still thought that i am always gonna weigh i don't know 220 pounds or whatever it is you know i'm not i could never be a size eight or ten or whatever it is yet that inner self-image is still that little child that we talked about earlier. If you haven't changed the mental programming of that self, inner self-image, you can't outperform your inner self-image because it's like a thermostat, you know? Uh, why do we call it mindset? It's because it's set. It's like a thermostat. We, the temperature is set at a certain temperature, say 28, uh, 28 degrees. It's not going to suddenly change to 30 degrees on the thermostat, now, if the, if the conditions in the room change, meaning like we lose weight, 
if the conditions suddenly change, what does the thermostat do? Well, it brings the temperature back to 28, whether that means increasing the temperature or decreasing or, or whatever it is, or stopping the heat for a while, it will bring it back to 28, isn't it? It's set, unless you change it. The same thing with mindset. If you don't change your mindset, what will happen? It's called psychocybernetics. This is how they uh, formed uh, missiles for World War I, I think it was World War II or World War I, where it had a set pathway, right? So it's got its given coordinates, and that's it. It doesn't matter if it goes off course, like a flight, it can get off course now and again, but it will always go to those coordinates. You know, if it's meant to be going to, to Japan, it'll go to Japan. It's not going to suddenly end up in LA. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Um, so if you have not changed your self-image, to reprogram your subconscious mind that about healthy habits, you know, I'm not losing weight because that's a scarcity mindset, I'm losing something, it's, I'm, I'm, gain, I'm gaining health, you know, I'm gaining years, I'm gaining well-being, I'm gaining positivity, I'm gaining zest for life. So when you don't, it, obviously it's more than that, but when you don't reprogram your mind, you will always put the weight back on or you will never really quit the smoking you know, when you're in someone else who's smoking or quit the drugs or come off the medication or whatever it is you want to do, it doesn't matter, you know. It, that's why, Mark, the income of someone who earns, say, for example, £10,000 per year, like this isn't a judgment thing, I'm just talking about mindset. The mindset of someone who earns £10,000 per year is very different to someone who earns £10,000 per month. The one who earns that per month is not better it's not better or anything like that, but their mindset, the set point is just different. The awareness is different, you know. Um, so that's what I mean by that inner self-image. They just have that belief, you know, um, or they've done mindset work to that point that they then have that belief that it is possible for them to do this. Whereas the one of the other one is probably having an, um, an inner voice telling them, don't be silly could possibly do that who do you think you are to be you know earning that per month or they don't even know that you could earn that per month you know because of the company maybe that that they keep so can you see how it's very much about the mind it features in every single aspect of life yeah phenomenal. i can i can see that because also i, I um the reason i know i i sort of got this uh I have a problem called mild vessel disease of the brain, which sometimes affects me when I'm tired or uh, I, if I write something, I don't spell it right or I might mispronounce words or whatever. It, it doesn't affect me. Well, it does affect my life. But I, I did let it take over me for a little while. I admit that. I did sort of think, oh my God, this is this, this is that. And then I realised what you said. I thought, now if I'm going to pick up on every single thing, you know, just I'm feeding the dragon, and the dragon's gonna go. Oh, thanks! This is more fuel, and the more fuel it gets, the more, it's it'd be like my OCD. It's the same thing. And the more you feed it, the more the more the more reaction you get. Because if if I get really bad, my OCD gets to the point I'm, I, I, I my routine breaks or something. I do it goes wrong. At that moment, I get from paranormal level goes up to about. 20 and I and I go paranoid to the stream I, I admit it I, I'm not going to lie about it I do go paranoid beyond the stream and it's not a pleasant per, it's not a pleasant thing to be like well, I know I have it but trying to conquer it is very very difficult because like you said your concrete thinking or your the thinking in there is still there the guilt I, 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 I think it relates back to guilt I mean because when I was a kid I was made to stay in a class. We was I was made to stay in a classroom for an extra year, and I think that guilt of trying to always catch up and feeling not secure with things, or always trying to be a different person, I think I still got that. I think I've never got over it. Yeah, I think, and thank you for sharing that, Mark. I think that's really powerful. And, you know, we, look, we all have that, right? We all have that event or that, that um, something that happened, whether it was childhood or recently, whatever it is, we all have that because we're all human beings. And this is um, what happens is it becomes stored in our subconscious mind, even when, I don't know, you might be making tea, like when you're not even thinking about it. Um, 
But the subconscious mind has, it's like a child, right? It doesn't know the difference between imagination and reality. So it, if, it, if that's what the self-image is, is set at, the mindset, mm. thermostat, then even if you right now are a, you know, um, you know, professor or you've done all of these things and um, not that that makes someone, you know, better, but it doesn't care because the self-image is set at that. It doesn't know any different. So people think that they need, they think it's all about diplomas and certificates and knowing more and, you know, IQ and, and, and that's all very, you know, that's all very nice, uh, but it is actually still very much on a kind of superficial level, to be honest. Um, and, you know, we all have it, you know, you, you know, some of my doctor colleague friends, even I had it, where you sometimes you think it's because why? It's because it's that self-image. It's almost like imposter syndrome, like, oh, I need to do this, or people will think that, you know? So, actually, what what needs to be done is two things. First of all, the mind needs to be reprogrammed to that specific story, or not, not story, but, you know, that event, and it can be a little bit murky for, you know, whilst you're thinking about it. But actually, when you kind of go back to it, when you actually, you know, when you think about fear, what does fear mean? Fear can be something sort of very scary and people can want to resist it. But actually, what resists persists and it makes it more painful. If instead you use the mental faculty which of, of something called perception and you just reframe what fear means. Fear is really useful emotion purely if you imagine fear is like a person who has a clipboard and is just kind of making observations as to what needs to be changed you know like in a you know like scrooge um and he has is it the angels or the 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 one of the past and the one of the, the present and the future and all i can't remember if they were angels or what what they were but you know he's basically they're kind of going through life isn't it and they're kind of going to that memory and that's what that's essentially what you know what i do in my coaching program is you go back to that memory which can be obviously painful but again that's perception that you think it's going to be painful but when you go back to it and you think well what's really going on here i mean well, why was i there must have been some reason you know why that person was put in for an extra year or maybe that teacher was wrong but whatever it happened you know but of all the years in your amazing life you know it's one it's one year or a couple of years or whatever it was so there's a perception that was formed then you know that placed a lot of uh, negative significant negative significance on those couple of years rather than some maybe some lessons that were learned during that time maybe that it was actually I didn't need to be put put back for, for, for a year or maybe oh actually well yeah it actually kind of helped ease the pressure so I could learn in my own way well, you know whatever it is that's 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 your, your journey but that's how fear should be used you know so fear I like to tell people no fear stands for face everything and rise Right, so you face it, you use perception to think, right, what is, could this be some kind of opportunity for growth? Is there something I could learn from this, right? And then, like you mentioned about the dragon and the, 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 the demons and telegraphs, and when you think, actually, maybe there is, you know, you're doing a beautiful podcast, and you know, there's actually some times where you're sharing a story with others, and there are people listening now who are so inspired, who are in a very, very dark time, you know, watching everything that, that, that you're doing and feeling like, wow, gosh, I didn't know that I could do that if you have the same condition, you know? The other thing is, so that's one thing, and the second thing is um, is attitude. So attitude, people think that, oh, yeah, I've got a positive attitude, but actually attitude is when we align our thoughts, our energy with our um, belief system which is that self-image, and with our actions. So often people know better about something, but they don't do better. You know, there's a gap. And so when we, when you have a good attitude or a healthy attitude, actually that's what it is. It's not just thinking positive. It's are your actions marrying up with... So your actions are marrying up, right? Because you are sharing your knowledge you're empowering others you're inspiring others you're educating so your actions are matching up with your new belief system or the belief system you're working on whatever it is and the same you know with me and what i'm doing so 
So I think it's really important with that. The second, the other thing I want to mention is the company that you keep. If I was around you all the time and I'm constantly telling you, oh, look, everyone with um, small vessel disease, yeah, there's just no way you could do a podcast. I mean, how would you do that? I mean, gosh, it must be so hard. It must be so challenging. It's going to be really difficult. Like, I'm not saying it's not difficult and I'm sure you have, like, challenging days, but can you can you see how that constant negative it's a negative perception isn't it whereas instead i'm not saying lie but instead if if actually you said okay i'm actually not allowed to think about anything negative i'm not allowed to i'm only allowed to think about how this has to work this has to work i'm only allowed to think of that doesn't mean you're not going to say that there are going to be some kind of tricky days and it's going to be a bit challenging but the words we use gosh it's so powerful our subconscious mind you have to treat it like it's a baby you know like the words we use are you know we're very gentle with our you know with 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 kids or it's like a a seed that you're planting you know you can be really gentle you know it's greenhouse give it the best conditions possible to grow it's the same thing with our mind but we're very free you know if you were trying to comfort me i'm sure you would be very reassuring and encouraging and say some really beautiful nice things to make me feel better but with ourselves we're actually quite harsh you know we're very negative and we don't correct that we don't seem to want to correct that so using positive language I know people think oh god you know it's more than or to say some nice words I, I get that but actually it's about reprogramming the mind so it is repetition affirmations that's essentially what we're doing reprogramming the mind and this is the reason why some people who were told, oh, you will never, I don't know, walk again, you know, or small vessel disease, there's, there's, you know, you'll never be able to, you know, to, 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 to remember this or to remember that. Actually, what did they do? They visualized themselves as what they wanted in perfect health. Um, they visualized themselves, um, you know, doing this podcast or the person who's been told they can't walk. They visualize themselves walking. They don't know how it's going to happen. You know, they're not thinking, oh, I've got to do this, this, this. They're just... I don't know, but this is what I want. And they had such belief. What was it? The thoughts, this inner self-image, and the actions were all married up to so their attitude. You know, they even though everyone was telling them there is no way you can do this. They weren't trying to be mean, but they were just, there's no way you can do this. But they didn't care. Their inner self-image was just like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm doing this. I'm going to find a way. That is how it happens. And that's how they seem like miracles. And it is determination and hard work and all of those things, you know, that iceberg picture of success and all the things people don't see. So, yes, it is that road. But but when you've got up, utmost belief, it is so true. Anything can happen. So I would say that you um, worked on your mindset, whether you realized it or not, you actually transformed your mindset mindset enough to be you know well we're talking right now right and you're you're doing this and you're sharing and you're 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 educating you know others and showing what is possible you know it's amazing what the body can do um so i mean i could go on and on about it but ultimately it's that mind body connection is so powerful but you don't know what you don't know right so if you if you didn't know that there was a way of doing the podcast or whatever it was, then you, would, you wouldn't do it. So it's about awareness as well. So people think that there's just no way that I could ever walk again or do this and that. If they don't know that, then they won't, they won't change their thinking. So awareness is, really, is, is so important. Awareness is really important. Tell me a little bit about your warrior queen bit. So I have... Uh, so I have uh, coaching program I've got quite a few of them but uh, the, my main one is something called thinking into results and the derivative of that is a woman empowerment group um, and essentially with that it is um, I like to call it warrior queens on the rise it's nothing to do with you know uh, fighting <laughs> or anything like that but I like that imagery you know for me that's what works um, it's like an avatar you know, so why do people like, for example, watching superhero movies? Because it gives you um, that feeling of empowerment, right? And often people who, you know, who are going through any kind of 
condition or mental health or physical condition or some kind of trauma or anything at all, they often have found that having some sort of avatar in their mind of themselves, right, so not a random person but you, as the highest version of yourself, like superhero, um, that actually is visualization, which is what you're doing is you're reprogramming the mind. So I like to call it warrior queen for me, or warrior goddess, whatever you you know, whatever resonates. For me, that kind of avatar really works for me. If I'm if I'm feeling like I'm needing to um, use my divine feminine energy and um, really feel empowered for me is that and actually that is the um that is the company logo as well so uh, my company athena publishing house and dr vidya uh, global um is a picture of athena who's a greek uh, warrior goddess and uh, she's holding instead of a spear it's actually like a like a pen uh so she's essentially a muse where you can use your words or your pen um, as your sword in order to prosper and conquer and and to protect others as well for good, you know. And so I like to see it as warrior queens. It's a it's a leadership program for women, or if somebody identifies with being a woman. But I also have or the the feminine energy, you know. So don't, you don't have to be a woman in the traditional sense. Uh, but I also have a, a general program for for everyone, you know. Because some people, you know, they're kind of going through something and they really feel like they need that 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 tight knit community. Um, but other people are also going through something, but they don't want to be kind of sort of segregated, as it were with just women they kind of need they want to be because I think empowerment for anything whether it's mental empowerment which I'm obviously a huge advocate of women empowerment black empowerment whatever it is I think that they need their own platform so that they can feel really comfortable when it's very acute you know a bit like when you were having those very negative voices and sometimes you need to just sometimes be with people who really understand or who are going through it and then then sometimes when you've kind of passed a certain stage sometimes you feel like actually I don't I, I kind of want to be empowering uh, um, I want to be empowering others who also don't know much about it because that's how I believe is the other way right is that we are having women empowerment or empowerment with everyone involved um, so that's that's my group warrior queens on the rise uh, it's a women, women's coaching program. Now, obviously, please mention your book and where people can find information about yourself. Thank you, Mark. So it's um, called Habits, Your Life-Changing Guide. It's available on Amazon, Kindle, and I will send you a link so that your listeners can kind of click on it easily and, and, and get there. They don't have to look for my long Sri Lankan surname. And also you can join my Facebook group if you want um, free coaching tips. Um, so it's called Diamond Success Mindset. So that's Diamond Success Mindset. And that's on Facebook. And my only criteria is that you have a high commitment and a burning desire to be the highest version of yourself. You know, you don't compete with others. It's a slippery slope. Um, so Diamond Success Mindset, there is also a separate women's group if you want that. And that's called Women um, Empowering Women to Think, Lead and Grow Rich. And when I say rich, richness is in every aspect of life, not just income. Um, so I'll send you those two links, uh, Mark, so it makes it easy for the listeners to just, you know, click on it. And yeah, I'll, I'll, put it, I'll put it on the... I'll put it on the link so I'll share. Um, now, um, I can't think of much else to ask you at the moment. I think we've, we've covered a lot of subjects. I think we could talk about a lot more, but obviously I haven't got that much time. <laughs> but, uh, but I think this just shows the richness of, you know, how what I would say with the mind in particular and how, you know, it, it's beautiful how we've covered... You know, mental health and books and empowerment and black and power and all sorts of things and I think I guess ultimately it's it's and as you've demonstrated with your own personal journey it's power of the subconscious mind isn't it even if some people don't even realize that's what they're doing which is even more amazing but it's power of the subconscious mind and that's what I want to want to 
kind of leave people with is that that power is within you, right? It's 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 in you already. You might need maybe coaching or books or you know, people to kind of shine the light and remind you and give you uh, like a like a bit of an intense program for like six months or a year or something just to kind of show you the way. But ultimately, it's it is all within you. So you genuinely can have you know whatever health you want you know whatever income you want whatever relationship whatever it is you want because it's all that self-image um and that's why it's about human potential really is uh, really is limitless you know when you know that actually you know like yes someone said this condition but sometimes those labels can also form you know like a kind of paradigm in the mind that that there's this label and they can't get away from the label and that can also um, sort of sometimes hold people back so it's just something to explore really I think you know read the book and just really ensure are you feeling empowered you know are you being your best self and if not then there's some great great tips in there and the Facebook group to uh, to, to help you out I always ask the, the guests the following question Dr. Brinda I hope I got that right what is your unique sign-off? My unique sign-off? Yeah. I would say my unique sign-off is harness your inner power to ensure that you are fulfilling your truest, fullest potential in life. Are you being your authentic self or are you being what you think others want to be? And I'll leave you with a quote. If I want to be free, I have to be me. Not the me that you want me to be. Not the me that my spouse or mum wants me to be. No. If I really want to be free, I have to be me. So... I better know who me is. And that's why I want to leave you with it. And mine for you is, Dr. Vrilinda, Habits, your life-changing guide, how to transform your mind, body and life for the 21-day plan, or as Popeye would say, the great philosopher in life, I am what I am.